It's Power Hour, LSU. PHL, extra little bit of swag, an extra little bit of taste. It is a glorious day here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, obviously, I went to the spring game today, so my vantage point of everything is going to be so different than most of yours. I want to say thanks to everyone that stopped uh, and hung out with us. We had a fun camera crew following us uh, today, so we got a bunch of really fun content coming up in the next week. And probably the most noteworthy uh, thing for us today is our interview with Bryce Underwood. So we were able to catch up with them. And not only did we interview Bryce Underwood, we also interviewed another uh, very special guest in the same interview. And that will be coming up. So that actually happened uh, while the game was going on. Uh, so we, uh, I, I wasn't able to watch the second half. I have been able to see the Colin Hurley highlights. And that's probably the name that you guys want to talk about the most Today, we'll talk about him, of course, coming up. And all I want you to do is just drop your best let's go. Because we got something we rarely get, which is LSU football and Tiger Stadium. You only get it eight-ish times a year. And I understand everyone's going to say, well, it was LSU versus LSU. But you're telling me on a gorgeous day in Baton Rouge, there was a free LSU game and you could basically sit on the 50-yard line if you chose to? That is an awesome thing. So shout out to LSU. The field looked absolutely beautiful. I love the end zones. I love the way that they are celebrating the 100-year history of LSU football. Let's start with the pros. And obviously, the big pro here is Garrett Nussmeyer. Absolutely lit it up. And what's very interesting is in private practices over the next, or excuse me, over the last couple of weeks, Garrett Nussmeyer had a little bit of an interception issue um, tons of incompletions, and all he did today was go 7-7 seven seven for 187 and two touchdowns. I understand. It is just a spring game. I totally get it, all right? I totally, totally get it. But the truth is, Garrett Nussmeyer is a really good starting SEC quarterback. You know, the expectations for Nuss are just going to be so unfreaking believably high next year. Because he is Garrett Nussmeyer. He's the son of a, a NFL coach. And there's so much Nuss momentum being built. There was Nuss momentum being built before last year began. And he wasn't even the starter. But he was good today. He was really good. And I understand. Well, Carter, uh, the Xavion Thomas touchdown was wide open. And to that, I would say it was. It was wide the frick open. But what I would also tell you is he stepped up in the pocket, felt out the rush, and threw it to Xavion Thomas. The ball still needed to be completed. And there was also really good throws to Aaron Anderson on the comeback route. That was obviously a really good throw. And for me, if you got elite quarterback play, you can play with anyone. And Garrett Nussmeyer, to me, I can't just sit here and tell you he's elite. He won't be truly elite until probably his second year as a starter here, if he chooses to have that second year. But what I would tell you is Garrett Nussmeyer looked really, really good. And he is going to be a really good quarterback in a weird SEC quarterback landscape next year with a ton of first-year starters. Y'all, if you have not seen Nico Ime Abelaba play for Tennessee, watch out. Kid's amazing. Jackson Arnold, amazing. Connor Wigman, Amazing. These are the quarterbacks that people don't even talk about being some of the best in the SEC. And Garrett Nussmeyer is in that upper echelon ahead of those guys for me right now. And there is a situation where he could be surpassed by those guys. But the Garrett Nussmeyer I saw today was really freaking good. And the LSU offensive line I saw today was really good in pass protection. Huh? Huh? 
Ah, which lends itself into the next topic here. Um, and as always, we say hi to Zach. We say hi to Amacat. Travis, it was very good to meet you today. LA Mom, I'm sorry. Our paths did not cross today. It's all good. We've hung out plenty of times. Jordan, good to see you, Skipper. Uh, Team Rockets wants to talk Colin Hurley. Michael, good to see you. And look, we say hi to St. Landry Parish. What's up, Mike? Good to see you. So once again, I appreciate you guys being patient for the later postgame show. Obviously, um, I, I was shocked today. I, I, I'm just going to say this, and I want to say thanks to, to, to Travis. He was there. Um, I I never take it for granted when I get stopped when I'm at an LSU football game, and you guys tell me how much you love uh, the channel. I, it's it's my dream to get to do this, and because of your super chats and your support, that's the only reason I'm able to do it. So um, if you want great content like that's going to be coming out over the next week, join our Patreon. Um uh, be a part of our Discord. Join us. Join one of the best communities you will ever see. Let's go to Tony here, who is in every single live stream that we do. Tony the Tiger, he said Kamarion Pimp didn't look good. Pimp had a really good day. I mean, there's no other way around it. Pimp had a really good day today. Um, and that's good. Obviously, as a blocker, he needs to get better. That's not his game, though. We want him out there catching passes, and he caught a lot of passes. And he showed us uh, some some really, really good toughness. Gets banged up earlier in a spring game. He could have said, look, I want to sit out the rest of the game. No. Buckled up his chin strap, went back out there, and had a really, really solid day. So shout-out to Kamari on Pimpton. You're right on the money. Now, I want to be honest with you. We will have a film study out tomorrow. I have not really been able to do my detailed viewing of the game. And a lot of the second half, um, as, as Clifton uh, can, can tell you, I was um, I was talking to sources. I mean, I was uh, working the phones, uh, hanging out with people that I normally don't get to hang out with. So I have not gotten to see every single drop back that Ricky Collins and uh, Colin Hurley had in that second half. What I can tell you is what Colin Hurley did today did not shock me at all. And look, I interviewed Bryce Underwood today. One of the best interviews I've done. His dad is one of the most impressive human beings I've ever met. And Bryce Underwood is, is really freaking good. Colin Hurley is really freaking good too. I mean, Colin can really fling it. And I, I, I got to be real. Colin is that dude. I mean, he is a really well put together, solid quarterback and him and Bryce. I know there's going to be such a huge comparison between Colin and Bryce. Who's going to be the next guy after Garrett Nussmeyer when we still got AJ Swan and Ricky Collins. What I will tell you is Colin Hurley and Bryce Underwood are two completely different guys. One thing I like about both of the quarterbacks though, is those two play within the framework of the offense. If you go look at Bryce Underwood highlights, he, he is playing within the framework of the offense, how the play is supposed to be run. He's not running around dilly-dallying. He's, he's putting the ball on the money, on time, on how the play is supposed to be run. Almost every single time. So, you know, I'm not going to talk too much about Colin because I really want to look at every single snap with the five-tooth comb. And I wasn't able to see it live, obviously. But uh, I did see the ball to Kai, and it was a really good ball. So there you go. Uh, we say hi to Danny Girl. We say hi to Greg. Dead Eye Jed, good to see you. Lots of missed tackles today. Yeah, the tackling was a little sloppy today, but if we're being honest, run defense was pretty good. Uh, you know, the, the there there it's a the, the thing that concerned me. If you guys want my real all out, no doubt concern is. This LSU defense, when it comes to run defense, up the middle in particular, is worrisome. Obviously, a, a lot of you are concerned about the defensive tackle position. I'm right there with you. I really am. But what kind of concerned me even more than that was not being able to run the ball up the middle. And there was a lot of, and I hate to say it, Les Miles vibes with some of our runs. They're a little predictable. Uh, we were running right into tackles. I felt 
There was a cutback lane missed here or there. But for the most part, the run blocking was not where it needed to be. And all of that is not on the offensive line. Okay. All of that is not on the offensive line. Oftentimes, it's not on them. We have got to get better with our run sequencing. Okay. It's not necessarily the play calls. It's not necessarily the players. It's not necessarily uh, the situation. It's all of those things put together. You know, our, our run game is not deceptive. And that's okay if you're able to five yards every single time, seven yards every single time. We're not getting that right now. So I am a, I, I am very concerned about our run game. I really am. Caleb Jackson, though, looked good. And obviously, you can't say it enough about Josh Williams. The broken tackle he had today was really good. He showed me some juice. And I know he only had a few carries. But it's no mystery that LSU wants to keep Josh Williams healthy uh, for all of next year. All right. Josh is, you know, I understand Caleb Jackson is the far more talented running back. I don't think anyone would tell you differently. I don't think Josh would tell you differently. But what I would tell you is when it's crunch time, the running back I want on the field in a two-minute drill is Josh Williams. And why is that? Because he's been our two-minute drill running back since 2020. I repeat, he has been our two-minute drill running back since 2020. That's how much football he's played at LSU. He's got a 2019 championship ring. So I like Josh a lot. As you guys know, I've always been a little bit I'm, – I'm, I'm always up front about my biases. I am very, very partial to the three-star recruits. And in Josh Williams' case, he's not even a three-star. We're talking about a two-star Walk-on recruit. He is so important to what we're going to do next season. Okay. So, we said to Epic Shorty. I got to meet Epic Shorty today. He is awesome. Met him and his lovely girlfriend today. Thank you so much, Epic Shorty. It was great to see you. BT kind of okie doke me. I thought BT was going to be at the game. And he started calling me. And I was like, okay, I get to meet BT today. And I was like, well, I'm not actually here. It's good to see you. Huh? 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 Uh... One guy I thought who had a very underrated day was Mason Taylor. I thought Mason did some really good things. Obviously, he had the 10-yard catch, but he had the key run block, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on the Caleb Jackson touchdown run. Uh, Mason Taylor's really good. And, you know, BK said it recently that the gap between Mason and everyone else in our tight end room is, is what it is up to this point. So, shout out to Mason. He is just a really good football player. And I actually wanted to go up and, and talk to Mason. I saw him after the game, and I didn't want to bother him because he was getting swarmed, <laughs> as was Emory Jones and Will Campbell. So, obviously, those three players are three of my favorite players to ever play at LSU. And I wanted to go up and talk to him. I just – they're a swarm. <laughs> ah, I, as, I mean, they're, they're A-list players. I mean, they've been starters two seasons, and they're coming up on their third season. And this is probably their last go-around at LSU. So, um, I, I'm, I'm very excited to see what's uh, next for them. As you can see, there wasn't a John Trey Kirkland in this uh, spring game where he had 16 catches uh, in a spring game just a few years ago. We had 20 total receptions. Kamarion Pinton led everyone with three catches. The guy that really stood out to me and the guy that will probably have my highest grade from a wide receiver is um, and once again, I, I've not had a chance to, to rewatch uh, the, the, the game just yet. But Xavion Thomas is a dude. He is a mother effing dude. And part of why I like going to games in person is it does seem a little bit different than if you're watching it on, on TV. When Xavion Thomas has the football in his hands, it feels like he is playing at a different speed. And I believe he is going to really push this wide receiver room. All right. Now, like you, I, I am very open with who I am and who I speak to. 
one person I spoke to, and I actually had the longest conversation um, with these two lovely people, probably the nicest football parents I've ever met, were the Hiltons. I met Chris Hilton's parents, okay? And for those that don't know, Chris Hilton's dad and mom were elite sprinters in high school, all right? They were elite, like record-setting, and, and the mom ran at Southern – and the father, Chris Hilton Sr., um, was a legendary Louisiana high school sprinter. All right. So Chris Hilton missed a really good ball from Garrett Nussmeyer down the sideline. But, you know, you, you can't hide what the kid did versus Wisconsin. And Hilton's going to be a big part of what we are going to do. Okay. So I'm really freaking excited uh, to, to see Chris next season. All right. So we say hi to Jay Cookin. I gave him a Jabril Cox card today. There you go. What's up, man? Good to see you. Welcome to the channel. It's good to meet you. You're a part of the Savion Jones crew. Good to see you. So I gave out probably a third of my collection today. Huh? 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 I brought a bunch of my cards. I gave them to a ton of kids, and it's awesome. Good to have you. Uh, we say hi to Fitzpatrick, who's really excited that he got to see Ricky Collins today. It was good to meet you today as well, Fitzpatrick. There you go. Now, in just a moment, I want to post a bunch of photos. I, I didn't I didn't have a chance to put every single photo in this montage here in a second, but we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, let's go to Quan Carter. How do you think the linebackers did today? Um, I w one thing I did like to see was Harold Perkins making a really good play in the open field versus Josh. Josh is only catch of the day. Uh, Perk was right there to make a play. Uh, you, you guys know how I feel about Greg Ben. You know, this is, uh, been an issue with him, which is consistent tackling and, you know, Penn is a really good SEC linebacker. He's a really, really good SEC linebacker. It's just, there's so many of these hot and cold moments with him that you're just hoping Blake Baker with a full off season with them is going to have that DeMond Clark impact on Greg Penn going into next year. Greg Penn is where he needs to be at all times, more often than not. We just need a little bit more tackling consistency out of number 30. Uh, but as you guys know, whenever I feel, uh, to, whenever I push a button or, or I'm a little critical of a, of a player, I am also positive. I, I want them to take that next step. Um, the Weeks brothers, I, I, I think did okay. I, I, it wasn't the absolute best day, um, from either one of them. Uh, but they, they did some good things. All right. They, they really, really, really did. Uh, so we'll see. Colton, we appreciate you and you deserve the bracelet. Okay. The only thing I ask, and there's a lot of you in here right now. Saying, hey, thanks for the bracelet. Thanks for the card. Thanks for the Burrow card or, or a minute ago, the Jabril Cox card. You guys just got to keep hanging out. Got to keep coming through. That's why I do these things uh, to show love to the community. But, you know, I'd, I'd love some love back. I want you to be a part of the community. I want you to hang out. I want you to see what we're all about here on PHL. Now, uh, I did get my Joe Burrow shirt here signed by uh, the great... Bryce Underwood today, and it's signed on the Jaden, or is this the this is Jaden Daniel side? He signed the Jaden Daniel side of the shirt. So, really excited for that interview with the with 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 Bryce Underwood. Um, one guy who had a really good day today was Colin Jackson. So he had the big red zone stop versus Shelton Sampson, and that was a really really good piece of defensive back play. Um. You know, I felt Shelton's day w w was rough, but what I would also tell you about Shelton Simpson is, let me tell you a quick spring game story about a player who had probably one of the worst spring games from any LSU wide receiver of all time, okay? All right, I'm going to give you this wide receiver stat line, and I'm going to let you try and guess who this receiver was. He had one catch. For four yards on nine targets, three drops, and a false start penalty in the red zone. 
Okay, so let, let me give you that stat line again. And this has happened in the past decade. A really, really good LSU wide receiver had one catch on nine targets for four yards, three drops, and a false start penalty in the red zone. And his name is Kyron Lacey. And all Kyron Lacey has done these past couple of seasons is become one of the best spring game receivers we've seen that he, you know, he had the one handed touchdown catch last year and he had another touchdown catch this year. So really freaking excited uh, that the kids that did went out there and struggled today. And Shelton Sampson was one of them. Shelton Sampson was one of, one of them. He did struggle today. I hope that they build on it and really work on their craft and take their game to the next level. Okay. You know, like one guy that you can consistently see uh, who works his ass off and is is not afraid. And I've not even had the the good microphone on. <laughs> um, the, the one player who has consistently worked his butt off is Chris Hilton. All right. And Chris did not have his best day today, but. He goes out there and he, he really puts work into his craft where he's going to be a consistent starter next season. I would implore every single player that plays college football to take what Chris Hilton has done with his own career. He was a top 100 recruit. He has seen other people in his recruiting classes. There are three other wide receivers in his recruiting class in Chris Hilton's class. That will be first round picks here in just a few days. And all he's done is say, look, I'm, I'm going to be like that. It's just my year is going to come a year after. So, you know, Chris Hilton and Kyron Lacey, who's our two top guys right now. They, they they've had rough spring games in the past. So just because you had a bad spring game today. Guess what? That doesn't mean that your future is set in. All right. Let's go to Landon. He says, I was impressed with Kylan Jackson, PJ Woodland, Deshaun McBride, not impressed by Major Burns, and especially not Sage Ryan. Hmm. We'll see. Larry said he finally got a chance to meet me. That's obviously pretty freaking cool. So here are a few fans I got to meet today. Obviously, uh, you'll see Larry coming up here in just a second. There's Larry right there. Huh? Uh, uh, that's Seth Lewis, longtime friend of mine. There's Epic Shorty right there. And uh, there's Mr. Whitney. And there you go. It's definitely awesome uh, seeing all these people today. Brian says interior line is struggling a lot. Are you saying defensively or offensively? Okay. Josh Williams broke Gilbert's ankle. Yeah, not Jordan's best day either. But what I would tell you is I would be very patient with our safety play. We had tough safety play in last year's spring game. And we had tough safety play all last year. So hopefully it's not the same thing, uh, a sign of things to come. Uh, but we'll see. All right. Now, we bring him in every time I do a show here. And he's, he's going to come over here and give us his thoughts on the spring game. And his name is one of the Prez of PHL or the Prez of PHL. You don't even have to come on camera. Yeah, you can just hold on. And his name is Cliff. What's up, bud? What's going on, Carter? All right. It's good to see you. Your takeaways. Well, you've heard me complain about this. The number one thing is the run game, the inside zone run game. And I have asked and begged and pleaded for some variation, some type of counter, some type of you could you could, you can even run like a trap or even the zone read with the counterplay, right? Yeah. That uh Lincoln Riley was famous for. He'll pull the two backside guard and tackle because if the run's going one way, pull it, throw it, whatever. Uh, that's that's the one thing. Second thing I thought about was like you've mentioned before, the lazy route running. It it, it really looked like I, I don't know if it was 
if they took the spring game as more of a glorified practice, were they really out there playing football? Right? Like, well, what were you doing? Because I saw some missed tackles that could have had more effort, I thought. Um, but that's just the things that kind of bothered me. What I did like was the motion. It looks like they're going to put a lot of a lot more motion into um, the offense this year. And I think if you look at some of the better offenses in the NFL, they have a very high percentage of motion. Yeah, Dolphins, 49ers, of course. Yeah, Bills, yeah, absolutely. And I think that there are so many variations of what you can run off of one play that looks the same with that yeah. motion. Uh, so I, I think that's going to be a little bit different. I don't think – you can you can correct did Dembrock use a lot of motion? Or a no? lot. Okay, yeah. So yeah, that, yeah, no, yeah. So, so that's going to continue. The other thing I liked, and you can help me out here as well, was the kind of tight end, H back kind of, and they use that motion, and that did help some of the runs. I think that, like you said, I think um, Taylor was the lead on the Caleb Jackson touchdown. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was that motion run through the the other motions from the H back and the motion from the slot. I think will go a very long way in what we do this year. Um, but again, offense is, is not the problem. I think the BK offense, whether Denbrock calls it or Sloan, is going to be fine. It's going to be the defense, as 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 we will see when the, the time comes. That is so well said. So we'll hear more from Cliff here in just a second. Type Y for yes, type in for no, if you can hear us loud and clear, like we always do when we do post-game shows. We hear from the head man himself, and here is Brian Kelly. Into campus. Jock. Jack. Jock. It's really Jack. He just he changed his name once he came here. You guys didn't know that? All right. What do you guys want to know? It was the spring game. Anything? The spring game here. Um, our trainer, Owen Stanley, uh, he told me there were no injuries to report of. Everybody got out of it clean. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, look, it's, it's like anything else, right? Uh, I mean, for me, these are opportunities to, uh, flip from 14, um, preparations and, uh, practices to one performance. And I want to see guys how they handle that. There's a big difference between a practice player and a guy that comes out and performs in front of, you know, regardless of how many people. It's Tiger Stadium. There's a history and tradition in the stadium. So when you come in here, I want to see guys that can flip that switch and get into the right zone and can play this game uh, at, at a high level that can be focused, that can be in the right emotional zone, that can do all the things necessary to play. We got to quiet these guys down. They don't know there's a uh, thing in here. They're kind of unaware of that. Hey, award winner, could you help us out out there, Brandon? I know I know you guys are got trophies all over the place, but you can help us a little bit, Mr. Trophy Guy. He doesn't do anything anymore. Won a couple of trophies. These guys are. Um. So. You know, honestly, for me, it's it's just about I want to see guys handle this as I'm locked in, I'm focused, I'm treating this like, you know, a real game opportunity. And I think some guys did that. I thought Harold Perkins um, did a really nice job working in the box um, and, you know, seeing counter. And, so I, you know, we were purposeful in, in running the ball at him and, and – making him defend and get over the top of the veer block of the tackle and uh, and then getting the back out and 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 forcing him to, you know, to, to tackle that. So, you know, that was really good to see. Um, you know, Kyron Lacey has had a great uh, spring. Let's see him uh, in a game like situation um, continue to do that. I, I thought I thought that was clear. And then the other thing that we highlighted is this a running game and, and how important that is with our offensive line to exert our will. And, and, I, and I thought I saw that. So the tenants that we talked about relative to leading up to this game, you know, I, I saw a lot of them. Now, you also saw the things that we have to get better at. Certainly, you know, we can't let the ball over our head. You know, we're you know, we had some coverage mistakes. Uh, those can't continue to happen. 
certainly. Um, you know, certainly, you know, we got to continue to uh, evaluate and and recruit at the, the defensive tackle position. Uh, that's a must. Uh, I like what our edges are doing. Um, we're getting good pressure from the edge, but, you know, we've got to be really stout inside. So, you know, th those are a couple of the observations that I think were what we talked about as a group in the sessions that we had that I saw today. So with that, go at it. So there's Brian Kelly at the um, very beginning right there. I am with him, uh, and we've not discussed this yet as far as, like, the busted coverages are concerned. Um, I, I will say this. If there is something to be said about the Madhouse defensive struggles is we didn't hardly ever get beat over the top last year, right? It was just constant gashing. Uh, missed tackles, uh, edge busting, right? There were times we did get beat over the top, but today just got beat over the top way too much. So I, I am glad that Brian Kelly was able to acknowledge that. And once again, as he said at the beginning, and I, I will keep emphasizing this, all right, it is just a spring game. So we continue here with BK. Uh, yeah, Coach, you talked about a couple guys, uh, you know, just trying to, pick it up for the audition, I guess, quote unquote. Um, just what did you make of somebody like Kylan Jackson, second year, looked like he made some plays out there, and then uh, Gabe Relliford, one of your new guys, uh, defensive lineman for freshman. Just what, what did you make of their two performances? Yeah, so it's all yeah, like like you got to look at, you know, Gabe was going up against the freshman, right? And he's a freshman. I get that. But, you know, now we're going to have to take Gabe and we're going to have to get Gabe some reps against, you know, Will Campbell. We're going to have to get him up against Emery, you know, because he's earned that now that we've got to be able to to see what he looks like against those guys. Um, what I liked about Caleb was patience today. He was a lot more patient on his running fits. He was a lot more north and south. He had been a guy that had a tendency to to bounce out and bleed out to the sideline instead of just hitting the thing north and south. And that was really encouraging with his physicality and speed if he hits these things north and south, as you saw in the goal line uh, piece of our scrimmage, you know, he can crease a, a defense. Sorry, I meant to say Kylan. Well, Caleb did a great job. And you might have said Kylan, but um, I thought Kylan did a nice job in coverage. But again, you know, his skill set is such that, you know, he's going to do a really good job on the tight ends. And, and we expect him to do that. I think what we need to see is his run fits. And, and, you know, we'll have to watch the film to see see that. Middle coach, uh, I saw you grab Nuss early and talk to him a little bit. What did you think of his day and how he settled in? I thought it was good. Um, you know, I, I thought there was a run read where he tried to, you know, uh, spit the ball out early with Major Burns. You know, Major kind of plays with him a little bit on the line of scrimmage off, playing a little bit of cat and mouse. And, you know, I told him, listen, if he's on the line of scrimmage, he can't get into his B-gap fit. Just hand the ball off. He can't get there. And and proximity sometimes forces him to do some things that he shouldn't do. So other than that, I thought he did a really nice job. Uh, the throw uh, as he stepped up in the pocket was, you know, quintessential in terms of what he's able to do. He keeps his eyes down the field. That's a huge thing, right? As he steps up in the pocket, he sees – you know, an open receiver down the field. I thought he was clean today. I thought he was efficient. I thought he did the things that we expected him to do. Well, one of them was cover two, and 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 we're we're you know we're we're in cover three, and we're playing cover two. I mean, so the corners rolled up. He's supposed to be a deep defender. I mean, you can't have those kind of mistakes. Um, they're 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 unacceptable and, and that's going to cost you a chance to be on the field. Um, so that's one thing. And then we just got flat out outrun for the football. Um, you know, we were in a coverage that we're supposed to be over the top. We just got flat out beat um, in those, those situations. So sometimes you just got to take a hard look at, you know, who do we have, you know, and, and what kind of situations do we put them in against, you know, um, you know, an elite receiver and, and, and we weren't, game playing against our defense today right so you know if we got in that kind of situation we may have to game plan and and help out a corner in that situation we didn't do that today Coach, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think the defensive line had the upper hand on our offensive line. Those guys didn't get very comfortable in the pocket. Um, clearly, I don't know what the numbers were, but they it didn't appear to me standing back there they were very efficient. Um, but a lot of that was they, they didn't have a lot of time to get their feet set either as I was standing back there. And again, I could be wrong when I watched the film, but um, I think Ricky was 50%. And, uh, you know, AJ was, you know, just, just a little bit better than 50%. Um, so, you know, we got some work to do there. You know, I thought the ball came out really well with, with Colin, um, looked clean, looked efficient there. Um, you know, and Garrett was, was what, seven of seven. So, um, we got some work to do there. How much better do you think would be defensively or just too early to have any idea? I know I know the basic tenets of defense relative to um, the the believability, the uh, the energy, the the want to. All those things are going to be there, which are important um, to, to as 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 a foundation. They'll be there. Then we got to execute, um, and and so we need we need to get some help at the defensive tackle position, which we will. We're we're, we're addressing it, and and we got to you know, obviously figure out, you know, what our corner situation is going to be. I think we answer those two. I think this defense will be a, a solid defense. That was a great Ed Daniels. I, I've known Ed for a long time, and uh, that's good journalism right there. Just a very straight-up question. Is our defense going to get better? All right. We'll get back to more Brian Kelly in just a second. Um, so while that BK was going on, I was able to watch a few more clips. Once again, if you are just joining us, um, the second half of the spring game, I wasn't really able to watch. Uh, I was interviewing Bryce Underwood, uh, which I think is better for the long-term view of the channel. Uh, but I, I, I do want to address something, um, d uh, defensively. I am positively impressed by Kevin Peoples. This was a big day for Kevin Peoples. Our defensive end play last year was bad. It was just bad. I will defend the defensive end play because you, the coaching changed so much for them, and we didn't have much structure. I think Savian Jones looks a lot better, and I'll be honest – uh, I, I sat, uh, it just happened to be this way. I sat with Savian's family at, at the spring game and he's gotten better. He has gotten a lot better. Gabriel Relaford looks really good. Obviously I feel like I need to have full disclosure. Relaford is a big fan of the channel. His parents watched the channel and we interviewed him just a few weeks ago. Relaford looked really good. He looked really good. That, that, that that's another good text and flip. But I, I, I'm not going to lie. When I go to bed at night, there are a few things that keep me up at night, especially with LSU football. We have been super spoiled with all the success that we have had. When we don't win a national championship, we have a Heiser Trophy winner. Okay? We, we, we have been so unbelievably blessed. I'm worried about the secondary. I'm really, really worried about this LSU secondary. And – I think we need to have some serious discussions about what is the best way forward for our LSU secondary. I would be on the phone right now with whoever uh, knows Greedy Vance, who is a New Orleans native, who um, we, we know New Orleans produces really good defensive backs. He's been at Florida State. And he's good. Greedy Vance is a good football player. He makes our corner room a lot better in the portal. He makes our corner room a lot better. Reached out to a Florida State source who shoots me straight. And he was like, yeah, Carter, Greedy Vance can play. And I was like, well, why is he transferring from Florida State? He's like, Carter, we got the best corner room in the country. And I looked, I was like, yeah, well, yeah, they do. They got two guys that are about to get drafted. And they're, they're, he just got passed up. And he has played a lot of football. 
I, I'd get on the phone right now and say, hey, we I like PJ Woodland. PJ Woodland had a really good play in the red zone today. I I like JV and Toviano. I do. But we 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 can't have another season with our corner play being being atrocious. It it just it just can't it just can't be. We can't we can't have that. So we are I, I feel in our secondary we are lacking some leadership. Um and that's not I'm not saying like like character leadership. I'm talking about getting people lined up in uh the right spots. So as Pegasus points out, we do get Zion Alexander coming back. That obviously helps. But I am not certain if, like, if Greedy Vance were to come over right now, I am not certain if he's not our best corner right now if he were to come over. Th- there is a piece of me that thinks P.J. Woodland might be the best corner in our room right now. Um, and Woodland's got a good grade for me. He, he does, right? Uh, but, you know, I, I'm fine with JV and Toviano. I really am. But I, I'm worried about our secondary. I really am. Because, you know, I, I hate walk-in touchdowns. That is the one thing I, I, I hate in, in the collegiate game is walk-in touchdowns. You want to force them to convert in the red zone. And what happened was last year we just had so many walk-in touchdowns, right? Explosive touchdowns. And I don't care if there's an explosive touchdown like Keon Coleman catching a jump ball over Major Burns. I can live with that. I, I, I can live with that 12 days out of 10. That is an NFL guy making a big-time play. I can live with that. I'm, I'm not going to you, – you're trying your best to make a jump ball play against one of the best jump ball receivers I've seen. All right? What I can't live with is what Brian Kelly was talking about. We're supposed to be in cover three. We're in cover two and walk-ins. All right. We can't have defensive coordinator or offensive coordinators saying, well, if we just flood one side of the field with verticals, one guy's going to be wide open. That is the basic tenet of defense. Just do not stop. Uh, just stop the explosive plays. All right. Um, and look. I, I don't have all the answers. I, I don't. I One thing that, that was pretty consistent was not only, like, people that came up to me, but, like, former players and players' parents that say they watch my film studies. All right? I, I, I have the same access to the information that you guys have. I really, really, really do. Like, I, I don't know any of the play calls. Everything is my best educated guess. Unless we get Brian Kelly, who actually explains what happens on the play, it is impossible for you to know whose fault a coverage bust is. It's impossible. You're not in the meeting room. You don't know how it's communicated. Really, only the players, the head coach, and the position coach is going to know. Right? Even own players on your defense might not know. Right? Coverage is complicated. But what I can tell you is we don't need walk-in touchdowns. We, we just cannot have that. Um, especially when we have USC in our first game and Lincoln Riley, of course, is um, one of the best play callers we the, the sport has seen with all the Heisman Trophy winners uh, that he's had. So there you go. Uh, let's go to Brian. Uh, Greedy Vance. Actually, Greedy's from your area, so I, I trust you. Um, I, I, I like Greedy Vance a lot. I, I really, really, really do. And I understand that that's not what Brian Kelly wants his program to be. He has said it, you know, plenty of times over. I I don't. He, he's not in love with the one year rental transfers, especially at DB. But we, I, I, I think we, I, and I know he just said in the portal we're really just focusing in on defensive tackles. Um. You know, we do need defensive tackles. Uh, there, there, there is um, one portal DT that I spoke to this week that I am very interested in, and um, and we had a great conversation. It, I, it wasn't any like recruiting thing because he's he's out there, but you know he's interested, right? LSU is doing their due diligence. Okay, they are really 
putting the foot on the gas to get this defense to be better. The only thing, and we'll play some more of this Brian Kelly um, press conference here in just a second. The only thing I would push back on, on anything Brian Kelly said in this press conference or in the past week, don't just recruit in the portal DTs. I feel like another running back would be nice. I feel like another corner would be nice, obviously. If, you know, the right tight end were to pop up, I would be interested in, um, you know, a more proven blocking uh, tight end I think could could be a very good piece to our room. Um, you know, one thing I, I, I witnessed today, Kamarion Pipton had a really good day. I thought Mac Markway has done some really good things this spring. But – Mason Taylor is just so good. He is just so unfreaking believably good at football. Um, the, he's like when his career is over, we're not going to look at him as the best tight end to ever play at LSU. Uh, but he's definitely in the, the the top five for me already. For me, okay, and he just does so many little things uh, that, and you, you can see it like like I told you earlier. I really wanted to go talk to Mason. I've, I've gotten to hang out with some of his family before. He he does a lot of little things right for our team. So um, really excited uh, to see him in the flesh because he is one of my favorite LSU players. Um, and I actually got a stack of Brock Bowers cards right here. Huh? 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 And uh, side note, it was good seeing Malik Neighbors on the sideline today. I don't think Jaden was at the game. I don't think Burrow was here. Burrow has been at the last two spring games. Hoping to see both of them there. Obviously, you know, Jaden is probably like the biggest LSU Tiger that's out there that I want to meet. I've never gotten to meet Jaden. Um, but one man can dream. I did meet Bryce Underwood today, so that's obviously great. Now, we will continue with the post-game press conference here from BK. But we've got to answer those two questions moving forward. Yeah, he's a young player, and and I think you guys know me by now that young players have to do things off the field, in the classroom. They, they have to be on time. They've got to do all the right things before we give them a bigger role on the field. He's working towards all that stuff. Um, he's a good kid, and, and we like him. But, you know, all of those things have to come together um, if we're going to give him a bigger piece of the pie. And he's working on it. He's getting better. He's making progress. Um, but, you know, there's there's still room for growth there. John, uh, Coach, I know the corners and defensive tackles may not have played as well as you wanted, but have you seen the coaching kind of make an impact already with both Davis and Corey Ray in there? Oh, absolutely. And, and look, the, the, the long approach to this is, you know, just look at who's on campus, you know, who we're recruiting. And, and um, I feel, look, we got to win right away. And, and, and I get that. And, and we're, we're going to put together a defense that, that puts us in a position to win the SEC. But um, if you want to look at this from a, a longer view, um, I, I've had a lot of players in front of me uh, over the past three months since we've hired those two that I hadn't seen in a couple of years. So that's a really good thing um, because we're going to, we're going to get the guys that we need at those positions and, and Bo and Corey are making an impact there. He did. He's a little bit of, of further along because he's been here longer, obviously, um, you know, I, I like what he's doing. Um, he's made a lot of progress and he's ready to play. You know, we, he's, he's building a bank of trust. He didn't have a lot in there, but he's building it. Um, and, and I like where he's going. Um, we like his energy. We like his, uh, the way he cares about what he's doing. And um, yeah, I, I think he's going to make an impact in our defense. Seth, Thomas, you had a nice report yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think he came in, you know, probably with a little bit, um, you know, too much on his shoulders, you know, to come in and, and try to be, you know, whatever, right? The next great LSU wide receiver. And I think he put a lot of pressure on himself. I think in the last, I'd say, week or so of practice, he really settled in nicely, started to um, play, I think, a lot more uh, at ease using his speed. And and now we're we're finding ways to get him the football. And, and the same thing with Daniels. You know, I thought Daniels was really good today. I made the nice catch uh, late in, in the uh, the spring game. Uh, but he really showed a consistency late. I think both those guys came in trying to maybe do a little bit too much and have kind of settled in nicely uh, and will be really um, – Solid players for us. Matt, you just mentioned Gabriel. Were, were yeah. there any other early enrollees, any players that did well today or any point during spring? Yeah, I mean, McBride, I think at the safety position, you know, gives you great length. Uh, and he's a tackler, which, you know, you really like for somebody that size. Sometimes, you know, you don't get a tackler, you know, at six foot four at that position because you expect that they're going to have great range. But he's a really solid tackle, and I, and I could see that today. He's been really impressive. And and uh, PJ at the cornerback position has had a really good spring for us. And I, I think as we continue to get him developed physically, you know, I think he came in at 153 pounds. He's up to like 168. He's put on about 15 pounds. He's got to put on some more weight as he continues to do that. You know, I think he's a real. Um, guy as it as it relates to competing for for playing time so you know i think those two guys in particular you you mentioned you know relaford um i i think they've been you know really impressive uh in 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 the spring not as consistent as i would like um i i thought today was an opportunity for him to just say there is no competition here and he's got to be more consistent, quite frankly. He's long. He's got all the tools. Um, he's a classic case of today, right? You know, you've got 14 practices. You look great. And today the, bo- the ball was, was wobbling. It was, not, it was not what I was looking for, nor was it what he was looking for either. He's a great kid. But look, it's about performance on Saturdays, and he's got to do a better job. No, the most surprising thing is that we, in my 33 years, I've never had anybody run into the damn kicker. I mean, I mean, really? I mean, that <laughs> that's crazy, you know? I mean, I've had situations where we've blown coverage in the spring, but um, we just have to be smarter in those situations. I think, you know, one time, as I mentioned, we got run by, you know, by an elite receiver. Um, that's going to happen. Uh, in the spring because we're going to let the kids play. You know, we're not going to have a – you know, Blake was was very vanilla today, right? He probably played two coverages. I think he 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 sent the nickel a couple of times. But that was – we weren't showing USC anything today, right? So that was vanilla defense. As I mentioned earlier, we would have done a lot of game planning against an elite receiver that. So we're on an island a little bit. What we can't have is we can't be playing cover two – when we're supposed to be playing cover three and, and there's no safety help over the top when the corners rolled up because he's in the middle of the field. So somebody's going to run by him. So we just can't have mental breakdowns like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, to me, what we've been striving for is, controlling the line of scrimmage, running the football, and that will set up the explosiveness within this offense. It's not going to be Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas. It's going to have a different look to the explosiveness, but you can still be explosive. But it starts at the line of scrimmage. And if you can't win the line of scrimmage with this offense, you will not be explosive. We cannot be finesse five wide, spread it out, and and do it that way. So – that's what's most satisfying is that we're going to have to start with the offensive line controlling the line of scrimmage through the running game. And if we do that, you'll get the explosive plays. And 
to me, that's what I saw a glimpse of today. We still got some work to do, but that was a good first step. There he is, Brian freaking Kelly. Now, let's do a little film study here. Um, this is my favorite play because we're having a conversation here about Mason Taylor. Holy crap. So you'll see him right here. He is the tight end that's motioning, and he's the one that has the very critical block here on Harold Perkins. Uh, this was a play that Cliff loved the most, and this is just called being an elite tight end. You know, he's pulling right here. It's a little counter GY action. And look at this. Bang! Hits Harold Perkins right there. And it's off to the races here from uh, Caleb Jackson. Now, one thing I would say about this is our secondary has got to do a better job with their angles. And they have also got to do a better job of just reacting and feeling out where a run could be. Right, say drying right there is just late to get up there and make that tackle. I am not sure if that was a business decision. Huh? Ha ha ha. I get it. I wouldn't want to get uh shellacked on a spring game either. Okay. Um something else I, I, I would say as far as like the uh spring game is concerned, you are going to see Blake Baker scheme some things up where um, we, we will, uh, have a lot better coverage, uh, to deal with, uh, some, I guess you could say mishaps or some weaknesses on the defensive side. One thing I did see was very basic coverage. There was one play though, uh, where Blake Baker did bring everyone and Josh Williams blitz pickup was so good, but no duds, Josh freaking Williams. All right. Uh, he's been here since 2019, uh, but he's still freaking good. And you got to think him being a walk on, you know, he's not, you know, the most athletic guy and he's still out there uh, taking souls, snatching souls. So there you go. Now, here's what you're going to do. We do it every live stream in the next 10 to 15 minutes. We'll take as many questions as we possibly can. If you do super chat, we'll keep it going. We have not had a super chat just yet. That's perfectly fine. I'm feeling those blessings about to come in. OK, because your boy needs some gas money. Huh? 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 Uh, but obviously, really excited for you guys to see the content that uh, we produce. And uh, it was good to meet you today as well, Ingram. There you go. So uh, lots of new PHL fans out there. There you go. I want to say something that is not football related. And I understand what a lot of you are going to say is, well, Carter, you're a football guy. You, you don't watch the baseball team every pitch of every game like I do. And that's you saying that because I, I have admitted a thousand times over. All right. I've said it a thousand times over. I will give you some baseball analysis. I can't give you thorough baseball analysis like Blake Rafino. Okay. It, it's, it's just, it, it, it's just something I, I, I don't do. I put all my effort into football, women's basketball, but I'll, I'll give you some baseball stuff. I did see Paul Skeens strike some other efforts out in the minor leagues, put him in the bigs. Paul Skeens is – this is the first thing I'll say about baseball. Normally when you say one and done, what do you think of? You think of basketball, right? Think of men's basketball. Ben Simmons should be the answer of what I'm about to say, but it's not. The best one and done – in the history of LSU athletics is Paul Skeens. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And there have been plenty of one-year rentals who have only played one year at LSU. Plenty. Okay, Jarek Bernard Converse is somewhere in, the, in, in that list. But when I think of one-year players, one and duns, Naz Reed is up there. Anthony Randolph, I think he actually played two seasons. But Paul Skeens is that guy. But if I could say one thing about baseball, and we'll, we'll get into a few other football things, uh, including uh, TJ Lindsay and, and and all of that. All right. Or JT Lindsay. I I think it's JT Lindsay. Either way, shout out Alexandria and the, the Blue Water Tower. I am so sick and tired of hearing ungrateful LSU fans 
called Jay Johnson at Orgeron. If I hear that one more time, because it's blatantly false, Jay Johnson is going to get LSU baseball back on track. He is nothing like Ed Orgeron. They, their, their personalities could not be further apart. And their pedigree, are, are, is, they're two completely different coaches. And I understand that this LSU baseball team, it feels like 2020 LSU. I totally get it. Two completely different sports. Two completely different scholarship limitations. Uh, two completely different situations. If I see that comparison on Twitter again, I am blocking whoever says it. All right, and I don't block many people. I'm so sick and tired of it. Okay, and I understand. I should stay in my football lane, and I give you a super hot take baseball. But if I see it again, I, I do. It drives me crazy. And the second thing I would say about people calling Jay Johnson at Orgeron or whatever, because our, our team's just not good this year. It's just not. It's just not a good baseball team. Who gives a shit? That's all I gotta say. He won a national championship, right? Ultimately, 10 years down the road, I'm going to love Ed Orgeron, all right? Even though the thing crashed and burned, and it took a while for Brian Kelly to clean it up, who cares? Jay Johnson got the mother effing job done. And I understand he had Paul Skeens, Dylan Cruz, Kay Beloso, Trey Morgan, Gavin Guidry. He had all these great players and a lot of coaches could have won a national championship with that roster. I, I, I would admit that. But Jay Johnson is still a good coach. And let's just say we never get back to that level again. Find someone else. And I'm always going to respect Jay Johnson for winning my favorite team a national championship. So I, I say give the LSU baseball team some time to breathe. Give, give Nate Yeski, who has been a national pitching coach of the year winner, some time to – work with Cam Johnson and work with some of these young arms and maybe just maybe our pitching staff will be back. So I just wanted to say it. I'll get back into football. Um, I, I'm going to give Jay Johnson a pass. You just do. The best coach in the SEC to me is Dave Van Horn at Arkansas. Even though he's not one in Addy, he had one terrible season. Okay. Every great coach has one bad season. Every great coach in college baseball, has at least one bad season. I truly think this season will end, and we will be back on mother effing track next year. All right? So we are going to get this mother effer back on track, and Jay Johnson is going to be the guy. All right? And I get it. Totally get it. A lot of us are nervous. Don't be nervous. Jay's going to get us back. All right. No cap. Okay. Now, back to football. Happy for the commitment. Very happy for the commitment. Don't know a whole lot about Lindsay. I really don't. Other than this was a dream offer, and once LSU turned up the heat, he really wanted to be a part of this class. I'm telling you right now. I understand it's running back. Running back is a, it, not the absolute most important resource when it comes to high school recruiting. It's quarterback and offensive line, and then it's a teardrop to the other three offensive positions when it comes to high school recruiting. Um, obviously, a quarterback, we're locked in. We're, we are locked in for a long time. Uh, and obviously, offensive line, we're killing it. Running back, we're killing it. I will say... I am a James Simon guy. I am a huge James Simon guy. And if any of you that have been following me for a while, if there is one position I have been ridiculously accurate when it comes to um, evaluating, it's been running back. So trust me on this. When I tell you James Simon is really freaking good, and I, I would really like him to be a part of our class. Now, when you get Harlem Berry and, and Lindsey in the same class, you don't need a third running back. You just don't. But James Simon can really freaking play football. I love him. He checks a lot of boxes for me as a running back. 
He reminds me a lot of a Daryl Williams with a little bit more upside. I I love me some Jane Simon. Okay. So congrats to Lindsay. I want this to be a three running back class. That is, if I was in that building right now, I'd say, we still got to go get James. And I, I think LSU wants to still go get him. I don't know anything what's going on with this recruitment, though. I, I really do want him to be a part of this class. All right. I don't know if it's a North Louisiana thing because I love North Louisiana players. Uh, but kudos to Lindsay, Alexandria. Love Alexandria recruits. Jacoby and Guillory is an Alexandria guy. He's been a good piece for us. And then, of course, the great DJ Chark was also Alexandria. So we've had some guys punch above their weight from Alex. So I'm really excited. All right. Um, so there you go. Let's go to Adam. Adam, I appreciate all your support, your super chats. I wouldn't be sitting where I am today without you. It's good to see you. Did Landon I be had a washout? I have not heard a single thing about him or see him do anything. He is still hurt. He was on the sideline today in uh non-shoulder pads. Don't know what's going on. Um, but I'll tell you this. I cheer for every LSU player. There's probably no path forward for him here. There's probably not. The wide receiver room is still stacked. And that's not any, it's not an, an, an indicament on his talent. He when it comes to pure speed. The fastest wide receiver is Chris Hilton, and then there's a gap. And then the second fastest receiver is probably, I would say, Xavion probably. And then Landon would probably be the third fastest, okay? Um, Landon can play. It's just he can't stay healthy. And playing wide receiver at LSU is the hardest position to crack in the SEC. It is very hard. A lot of kids transfer in. And uh, they 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 want to play where Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase have played. Our super chat is a man who's sitting right to my left. Look at that! All right, well, what's your question? Uh, two things. One, let's uh, shout out uh, the Chicken Florentine. Chicken Florentine. Rotolos, if you're listening, we do have sponsorships available on PHL. There you go. Uh, shout out Dex uh, for the great job he did today. Lisi. Um, what I want to I want to just touch on one thing that, that you said, and we were talking about the defensive tackles that we need and how our secondary shapes up. If we can get, and this is my opinion, and you can you know fact check me or or, or challenge me on this. If we can find someone that can occupy a double team in the middle that will let our pass rushers have some one-on-ones, I think that will be a big factor in helping our secondary out until they can figure it out. Don't know where that guy comes from. Don't know if there's even one out there. But whatever we can scheme up with people's – he coaches the edges, correct? Peoples, yeah, Kevin Peoples. Okay, yeah. so with Peoples coaching the edges the way that he has and his track record, if Blake can continue doing what, what he's doing, we just need to just let our edges put a little pressure Let's on go. the on the quarterback, and that will ease our secondary concerns uh, until we can get you know back on track there. But I uh, had a great time today for everybody that came out. You know, thanks a lot, uh, much appreciated, and uh, let's keep it rolling, man. Let's get let's keep it going. Let's take a let's take a few more here because Cliff and I have got. Uh, some appointments today. We're going to New Orleans tonight. Be ready. Where we're hitting up Frenchman Street. I'm kidding. Jerry just got home. He wasn't able to watch anything. Yeah, it's been a busy Saturday for a lot of you. Apparently, the Strawberry Fest was today. That's where Cliff's, that's where Cliff's trying to go. He's trying to kick me out of here saying so go to Strawberry. Uh, TJ, one of the one of the biggest PHL supporters, is at the Strawberry Fest. Uh. Pegasus has a baseball question. If he's super, we'll get back into baseball. Uh, we say I had a chance. We say out of Brian. He says the Sage experiment needs to end. I've rooted for him. I want the best for him, but he's uh, an issue for us on the field. Yeah, you, you know, I'll... I'll keep my mouth shut. How about that? Because, look, I've had a great day. (laughs) I've had a really good day. But, you know, there's a piece of me that agrees with you. 
But there's also a piece of me that says at least we have a deeper secondary where if someone can outplay Sage, we can have him out there. And I know a lot of you in particular want Kylan Jackson to replace Sage Ryan because he did have a really good day today. Jerry, thank you for your super. Okay. I mean, it's it's one of those things like, and I, I'm not just saying this about about the commenter or or, or anyone. When your face is on here and you're actually talking it into a microphone, uh, it's it's tough to be overly critical, especially of a team leader who is experienced, right? But Sage needs to play better. Okay, he just does. It's it's been an issue. I have been very public about it. I've not only been public about it, I've also been very open about it on Patreon. Okay, our paid community where I've done deeper breakdowns on some of my issues with with Sage, right? I want it to work out as much as anyone does. All right. I I I I do think um for me, if I was a secondary coach, I would go in a different direction at free safety. I would. But you know, I I do think it is a little bit more important to be more patient. Because we do have three new defensive back coaches that are out there, okay? And they need to uh, get their time to make the right decisions. Now, if this was a year two DB coach, I would feel a little bit more forthright with saying, hey, something needs to change right now. But we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see how things uh, play out. Go ahead, Cliff. Quick question. Uh, how many secondary coaches has he had while he's been here? A lot. Uh, well, one of his secondary coaches was um, uh, Corey Raymond. Right. When he first started, that's when um, the the great number three convinced him at the last minute to uh, come on over. Okay. All right. I, I think it's just – as as we talk about the defensive tackles that have had been unfairly judged because of their n numerous number of coaches, right? That that occurred to me like, well, how many coaches has he had? How many different voices in his ear? Does he lack technique? Does is 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 the system not working for him, or is he out of position? I I I don't know. I mean, there's talent there, but I just don't know what's going on. But that's all I want to say. Don't forget powerhourlsu.com slash shop. Okay. Just got a text from an LSU women's basketball source. Uh, and you guys know, I, I, I got to be honest, LSU football is always going to run the roost. It's just how it works. Okay. Um, I'm always to the point though where I I just want to go study the women's basketball portal. Like I I can't quit thinking about it. It's like, God, we need a point guard so bad. We don't need one point guard. We need two of them just in case the other one doesn't work out. <laughs> huh? 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 I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I I as I was walking into Tiger Stadium today, all right. Like I literally, and you could go on my Instagram, you could see this for yourself. I literally just stood by this among Augusta statue for like 10 minutes. I was like, I miss the hell out of this woman. <laughs> I really, really, really do. And I'm like, I had like a weird vision because, you know, like there was this crazy photo of Angel Reese and Simone Augustus like 20 years ago or something like that, like 10 years ago. And what's funny is like everyone talked about like Angel Reese and, and Simone Augustus. The truth is like Michaela Williams actually plays more like Simone Augustus and, oh, and, and, and like it. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's not that Angel's great. Angel's a, a legend, but I don't know because. Last year, I saw um, I wasn't able to uh, catch him, but uh, Michaela Williams' dad is is a friend of the channel. I saw him walk by the Simone Augusta statue. I was like, it would be so cool if Michaela Williams, boom, has one right next uh, to Simone Augusta. They got to get an Angel Reese one at some point. But you know, I was like, God, and and immediately I was thinking, like, I, I get this text from uh, 
so and I trust with women's basketball information. Uh, I won't, but obviously, I won't read it now. Uh, but I'm, I'm trying to learn more about the women's basketball portal. Like I, I really, really, really am. Um, I also tell you this. I and I brought this up a little bit earlier. I did speak to um, a, a potential target for uh, LSU and Brian Kelly, and we'll, we'll we'll see if if he actually does commit. And uh, I, I feel I'm, I'm kind of in the middle on it. Kind of in the middle on it. Um, so there you go. So Lance, good to see you. No, that's okay, Brian. Look, I have built this channel. I, I'm always open when I speak to um, players, families that watch this channel and stuff like that. And you, I, I don't feel like you're out of line. Like if now, if you were saying this about a true freshman, I'd be like, yeah, calm down. But you know, this is this is a little bit different. It, actually, it's a lot different, right? We're talking about a year four guy who has has a lot of playing experience. All right. So there you go. Yeah, we'll take a few more next five to ten minutes. If you do super chat, we'll keep it going. Um, crazy, crazy day, crazy day. All right. Now. Let me see. I actually do. Okay. I actually do kind of need to take this. I'm not joking either. Like, I I, I don't have many women's basketball sources. I, 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 I want to dive even deeper. Like, I know, like, Angel left, and we might not ever have a team as good as LaDasia Williams and, and Alexis Morris, Angel Reese. And, and all those stars. Like, part of me is like, I don't want to be, like, I, I don't want to be that bandwagon, like, LSU women's basketball fan and just not care anymore because we don't have Angel Reese anymore, right? I I want to be South Carolina so freaking bad. Like, I there's almost a piece of me that almost wants another women's basketball title as much as I want another football title. I guess how much I freaking want women's basketball to be a thing in LSU and us to always have this rivalry with Don Staley in South Carolina. And the fact that Don won another one makes me want to be that program in the SEC. I really, really want it for Kim. So, yeah, I, I, I am in. So if any of y'all know anything about the women's college basketball board rule, please educate me because I'm still learning. Charles, what's up? BK stated that the defense was quite basic and they were not planning to reveal much to USC. That he did. That he did. But we, we just played this full press conference. He he also said we, we, we can't still give up walk-in touchdowns. And to that point, Charles, I, I would push back on the basic defense thing. You are right. And I, I did say on Thursday, Brian Kelly – is going to tell Blake Baker that we need to do very basic things defensively for two reasons. Number one, offensively, LSU had had some issues at practice with interceptions and incompletions. You want your offense to publicly put on a show for a public, all right, in a public setting. It just gives you more positive momentum, right? And you also defensively don't want to give up too much stuff to the public either. Right? You want to be very static. You want to be very basic. Where I would push back, though, is while our coverage was very basic, that should in turn mean that the assignments for our defense are easier. Thus meaning we should not be getting beat over the top. Now, if we're doing a bunch of exotic rolling into cover three, into cover two, or and stuff like that, sure, if we have coverage bus, that's a lot to process in the public. But as Brian Kelly said twice in the press conference, if we're in cover three and we're playing cover two, it's unacceptable. Okay? It's unacceptable. 225 better than the 3-1 great. <laughs> I'm not gonna say nothing. 
Not going to say nothing because look. Street, street. The PHL capital might not be Baton Rouge. It might be Shreveport. I'm, I'm serious. Like, Shreveport loves him some PHL. I have freaking done so many shows in Shreveport with my buddy Ty Christiana. And I wanted to go up to talk to it. I've never met Will Campbell before. I kind of wanted to go up and talk to him because uh, because Will and 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 Ty are, are are associated with each other. So there you go. Beers from Oregon State. I saw that. What is she a uh, shooting guard? Can she play point? We have got to have a point guard. And. I understand it is really hard to play point guard for Cam Mulkey because she is a point guard and she is notoriously hard on every single player that she coaches. All right. But if it takes me being the North Louisiana guy, so be it. I will always hold on to the North Louisiana stuff. Pegasus says, so is Ricky Collins QB too. I'll tell you this. A.J. Swan obviously had a really bad interception. Good job of Deshaun McBride getting it done in the red zone. A.J. Swan put the football in some good spots today. I really do think so. Um, I I will say this when it comes to a QB2 battle. And I have always said this when it comes to QB2. Your starting quarterback needs to be your best quarterback. It doesn't matter how old or young they are. That starting quarterback needs to be your best, whether if he can run or not run. Okay. But when it comes to the backup quarterback, if it is a close battle between a backup quarterback and another potential backup quarterback, the tiebreaker for me will always be the ability to run. Now, why is this the case? Well, There is obviously a pretty significant drop-off from Garrett Nussmeyer to the next guy. Whether or not you believe some of the rumors that Garrett Nussmeyer has really been struggling in in, in practice at times, and those have picked the Sadron, pick six to Sadron or whatever, whether or not you you want to believe in that, that, it's it's perfectly fine. But Garrett Nussmeyer is on a different level than the other two. Let's just say, knock on wood, that Garrett Nussmeyer goes down in a game. The opposing defense has been preparing all week for Garrett Nussmeyer, who cannot run. All right. The only benefit of Garrett Nussmeyer going out is if the backup quarterback can run. Because it gives the defense something that they are not prepared for, something that they were not um, expecting. And while Ricky Collins is definitely not the most polished quarterback you'll see, he has improved mightily, all right? He has put in a lot of work away from practice. I've gotten this confirmed, and it's not just him flying out to to, to throw with Jaden. He's taken coaching really well, so I'll, I'll, take, I'll, I'll take that, okay? But if some of you don't think he's taken coaching well and you have information that I'm not privy to, feel free to send me and correct me on that. I, I want Ricky to be the backup. Number one, he's a Louisiana guy. Number two, he can run. And whether or not we want to admit this, one thing that today proved is our running game over the past couple of seasons has just been a byproduct of Jaden Daniels' ridiculous ability to run. Yes. All right. And what scouts call scouts and experienced people that know way more about football. They use the word gravity, the gravity that Jaden Daniels creates. Now, Ricky is not as fast as Jaden. He'll never be as good as runner as Jaden. Nobody will be. Probably that plays at LSU. But he does give you some zone read stuff. So I, I'm really excited. And if I had to choose between a QB2 right now, even though I think AJ did some good things and a lot of people will focus on the red zone pick, I, I would go with Ricky. I would go with Ricky. I, I would. I would. If Brian Kelly said, hey, Carter, I want a neutral viewpoint. Tell me who you think. I'd, I'd tell him Ricky. And I will tell you this. 
That is not how I felt going into this spring. I, I, I thought Swan was going to clear Ricky. I, I really did. Because AJ's got some really good film on tape. He really does. But I, 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 th I think Ricky's done enough. I thought today was good enough. Now, the question that a lot of you are going to have is, well, Carter, what, what about Colin Hurley? Can Colin Hurley jump the other two? One thing that I think was very interesting in, in spring, and this was just during the open period, um, things were a little bit different when it wasn't open to the media or whatever, but still not a whole, whole, whole lot different. The LSU coaching staff has made it a point that most of the two and three reps went to Ricky and AJ. All right. Colin did some really good things today. And what I would tell you is, you know, I'm replaying the last couple of spring games in my head right now. Garrett Nussmeyer's first spring game as a true freshman early enrollee, he threw three interceptions. But if you actually watched his first spring game, some of his throws were really freaking ridiculous. Absolutely freaking ridiculous. Yeah, he threw three picks. Two of them are right at people. But he did some really, really special things in his first spring game. If you actually watch the tape, all right? Go a few years ago. You had um, Walker Howard as a true freshman in his spring game. Threw a touchdown on a mesh rail to the running back. Didn't really do a whole lot. Didn't really get a chance to play a whole lot. Whatever. Ricky Collins last year in the spring game. Threw a pick six to, to Whit Weeks. Looked a little disheveled. Colin Hurley of the past four true freshman quarterbacks had the best spring game today. He did. All right. Now, once again, I will hammer this home. I have not been able to watch every snap of that because during um, uh, during during the second half, I was interviewing uh, athletes and 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 speaking to people I normally don't get to speak to on a, on a normal basis. Okay, so. I need to go back and rewatch all all of uh, Hurley's snaps. I've only seen really the highlights, so maybe I'm I'm overrating what he did, and what we'll see, and we'll, we'll do a film study tomorrow. But what, what I what I would tell you though is Colin is very composed. And one more thing I would say about Colin Hurley, and this matters a lot more to me because I've actually done the research on this, and this is something else that excites me about Bryce Underwood. Okay, they are younger. They are young for their age. All right. So Colin Hurley right now is 16 and a half years old. All right. He has a birthday in, in, in March. Okay. So he actually might have just turned 17. I don't know. I, I texted Colin a minute ago and, and I was going to try and get on the phone with him at some point. I wanted to meet him actually in person. And obviously we've had a lot. Of, I've had a lot of conversations with Colin. Um, Colin is very young. Colin has worked out with the quarterback that has grown on me at the NFL level, and that's Anthony Richardson. Colin works out with Anthony Richardson. Colin works out with Will Gormley, who's a, who's a quarterback trainer. Car he just turned 16. He is one of the youngest college football players to ever play at LSU. He is so young. All right. I like to age-adjust production, okay? Malik Neighbors is the youngest LSU or the youngest NFL wide receiver in this draft, period. It's harder to dominate when your actual age is low. There have been millions of studies done on this. It's not only athletics, it's academics, music, all of it. So... Even if Colin, and I watched this film, even if Colin Hurley and, and the actual performance was a little overstated and the touchdown was against like a fist string DB or whatever, the fact that he's out here processing and playing is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I, I cannot give him enough kudos for that. Like it is so hard to do this stuff at a super duper young age. But he's been exposed and trained 
uh, to a lot of things that most players don't normally do. And I've had, obviously, conversations with Colin on our channel as well. And he is a very special, special individual. Uh, and once again, it wasn't the longest conversation, but when I when when you see the Bryce Underwood interview, you will be shocked. This guy is ridiculously mentally talented. I brought up a, a random play that I saw him do in a state championship game, and he was able to break down every last detail. And it was an incompletion that we talked about. He is crazy. All right. Colin Hurley and Bryce Underwood. That is a QB battle I'm looking forward to. Maybe two years down the road. It's going to be ridiculous. And no, you could say, well, actually, if you did Super Chat $1,000, I would give you my honest opinion on who I think is going to win that quarterback battle two years from now. But I wouldn't tell. I don't know if I could either because I really don't know. I really don't tell. I really, really, really don't know. Okay. I really, really, really don't know. All right. Let's go to LA mom. She says AJ may get better with more time in our system. It's true. It's true. Adam says he's ready to put Colin Hurley up there at QB2. Yeah, I don't know if I can go that far. Uh, once again, if I, I'm going to give you a rewatch, and we'll do a live stream tomorrow night, and I'll give you my honest opinion on that. Um, but I, Adam, I, I don't know if I can get there just yet. <laughs> huh? 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 Because look, I, I will, I will tell you this. I, for me personally, I do not want Colin Early playing next season. Like, for for a lot of different reasons. Number one, I, I do think. It is a lot to be that young to be the top quarterback backup on your team. Like that is a that is a lot. I don't I don't think it's that I it's it's not that I don't think he can handle it. it it's 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 just that is a huge step up in 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 jump, right? One of the youngest players that ever played LSU, and you jump two other quarterbacks, one of which has ten SEC starts to his name. It's a lot. It's a, it's a lot. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, for, for me personally, I, I, I do think Colin, if, if we're just talking about throwing the football, he is the second best quarterback on this team. He's second best quarterback on this team, but that is just throwing. There's more to it, obviously than just that. But I felt that way before the spring began, because he is such a natural pure thrower of the football it's butter he, he is he is really solid but i i want this first year to be a red shirt year so I, I don't if you put him at qb2 and and you put a depth chart out there and he's qb2 you know this the second most important person on your team is your backup quarterback obviously in theory it's will will campbell but second most important player on team is probably your backup quarterback Big Al's probably the biggest Colin Hurley fan. Big Al's been saying it for a while, man. He's been Big Al's been w with me since day one. He has said it since Colin has has, has committed. All right, we'll take a few more. Ralph, you get the next uh, question. Go right on ahead. Tr, you get to see you. Okay, let me see. Ralph's got the One Direction. For those that don't know, I'm a huge One Direction fan. We worship Harry Styles here on PHL. But here's a good thing. All right, I know I make um, One Direction references all the time because, you know, my that's my wife's favorite band, and Harry Styles is her favorite artist. I like One Direction as well. We also have kids that watch this channel, and, and they're probably bigger One Direction fans than people in their 40s and 50s. So for those that don't know, One Direction is a boy band. All right. So like Backstreet Boys, but like a later generation. All right. So Harry Styles separated from One Direction that the, the group broke up and he is the biggest star. He's one of the biggest pop stars on the planet. Like it's probably Taylor Swift, Bruno Mars. Um, you probably know them, 
But like Harry Styles is definitely in the top 10 biggest pop stars on the planet. He sells out stadiums. What I would say is Harry Styles was not the most talented player on one direction, or not the most talented singer on one direction. That would be Zayn. Zayn was by far the best vocalist on one direction. He crushes everyone else in the group. But I use this all the time because that is not how football works. Football is never really about who's the most talented. It really isn't. Like, you can have the biggest arm. You can be the absolute best athlete. I'll tell you this. This week on my NFL channel, Colin Hurley, if he was watching this, he would agree with me on this because he's good friends with this guy. Anthony Richardson destroyed my brain. When it comes to being talented, he he's he's better than almost every quarterback in the NFL except Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Those are the only two quarterbacks that are more talented than him. When it comes to arm strength, athleticism, processing, he's he's got it all. He has got it all. And he's got a really good play caller. But just because you're the most talented does not mean you're going to be the best. You know who else is supremely talented? C.J. Stroud and Trevor Lawrence, who's in his own division, right? So when it comes to playing quarterback, the most talented doesn't always win out. There are pieces, and, and some of you that watch this that still think Walker Howard was the most talented quarterback in, in our room, and that could be the case. We'll see two years from now if he's a guy at Ole Miss or whatever. But to any player's parent that I met today that watched today, uh, or, or that I met today that, that are watching right now or whatever. The most talented person doesn't always like stand out to me. Right. There were some players I watched today that are so supremely talented, but you can clearly tell that they aren't putting the work in. I won't, I won't say who. Um, but I was disappointed. I, I, there were some guys that I think are real NFL talents. All right. Real NFL talents. Go put the work in, go, go put the freaking work in, right? If you knew anything about Justin Jefferson, you know, he put the work in. You know anything about Joe Burrow? You, you know, he put the work in. All right. It's not, you, you don't need to obviously run, uh, like a gazillion routes after practice. You don't need to play Madden and, and learn every coverage on Madden to see if it helps you out. That's not what I'm saying at all. But really put the work into your craft. Like reach out to to, to other LSU players and, and, and whatnot and put every last little thing into this opportunity, right? Put every last little thing that you possibly can into making it work. At LSU football, because if you make it work, the fans here will love you as much as any fan base that you can think of. And there were some players here. I was like, man, this is this is you're back. You're getting an opportunity to play again. I don't feel that that, that there are some guys that are really putting it all out there. And I felt like the effort today was actually really good. But there there are some guys I'm like, man, unfreaking leash. I mean, you got I freaking leash your talents, but you you've got to work on the little nuances uh, of the game of football. And we'll we'll touch on some of this in, in the film study uh, tomorrow. So, um, you know, Pinton today is definitely one of those super talented guys that you could tell is is worked on it, right? Uh, if he if he learns to block, he's going to be a big problem for us, a big big problem, uh, not for us, but for opposing defenses. So, uh. There you go. LSU in Pineville? Was LSU found in Pineville? Is that true? Founded? Founded in Pineville, Louisiana. I don't. No, I don't think so. so. I mean, I know Pineville is home with the Wildcats. But do we know where LSU got his colors from? I don't. I, I, I keep forgetting the answer to this. The answer to that is the colors were supposed to be Mardi Gras colors, purple, gold, and green. But when the uniforms first got there, there was no green. Therefore, they went with purple and gold, and that was the story. I didn't know that. 
the more you know the 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 uh the the star shooting through the sky the more you know mm. all right i think that'll do it for me Appreciate all our top super chatters. Our number one super chatter was a man who went and got me a Rotolos Calzone. That's Cliff. Thank you so much. Jared and Ralph, I appreciate you guys. Um, I really appreciate everyone that uh, stopped and hung out today. Uh, we got some really cool content coming your way. Uh, shout out to Lisi Dex, Dex, and the whole crew. Um, and uh, literally, I am getting off this, and I am making a call. I, I can't believe it. This gets me so excited. Making a call about women's basketball. When <laughs> when. When this gets off, because I, I I want I want some freaking superstars in the portal. I I, I we have got we're losing Angel Reese. Obviously, that's a big loss. But look, she's a traditional post player. Maybe we can open up the floor. Like, okay, and 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 you know what I'm saying? Play play a little bit more of an open style. Get get Michaela Williams more space to let her cook. I, w I will say this. It's not that the post is a bad thing, but we can definitely have a, 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 an open style. But if you notice, in the last game that we lost to Iowa, yeah. when they ran more on-ball screens for Van Lith, that was a better thing. Okay. I, I put a lot of that on Kim Mulkey, um, and, I, and I will say this. And I love Kim Mulkey, so Kim, if you're listening, you know, take my two cents. Uh, do what you will with it. But... All of her teams, her championship teams, have pretty much been able to out athlete everybody else. Her okay. Baylor teams, her, her LSU team last year. When you get the recruits that she gets at the level she gets them, and you roll the ball up to hey girls, just go play. I'll, I'll give you a basic structure, and then you follow that, and then you just go do your thing, right? As opposed to if you look at Don Staley. And the way they structure that offense inside, because like, Don Staley has always had one big girl. Yeah, and she, she, one big girl, and they play inside out. And they do. The they, they play they, inside out. And so they, I might be wrong on this. We we might need to go get some more bigs. Hey, look, if we just get one, it, no, but the girl that we have, Del the, Rosario, Del Rosario, Del Rosario is gonna be a she beast. Has, she has to just get her coordination. She's still growing into her body, right? Right. Um, but I would beg Kim Mulkey, please, Kim, run some motion, run some off ball screens, run some action off the ball that will kind of uh, open some stuff up but hey let's go get them go tigers let's go kim kim i will do whatever it takes to help you get some some superstars in the portal we, we we've got to run it back got to all right y'all uh we'll have a film study at some point uh tomorrow i'll be traveling as well eh, has. power hour lsu boom so right now uh you will get game grades in the patreon first thing in the morning uh, tomorrow so please go join the patreon get in the discord and uh, get you some pho merch powerlsu.com and tonight we're doing chicken wings let's call